all you heads and headettes. How you doing? I'm Joel Martin, and you've clicked through to another edition of Help on the Way, Grateful Dead Guitar Instruction, or H-O-T-W-G-D-G-I. Today we're going to talk about the most epic song in Epicville. Uh, one of the greatest moments in the Grateful Dead canon, for sure. And it came in a very transitional moment for the band. After four years of having their own record label, trying to make their business affairs as autonomous as possible, they decided they weren't really great at having a record label and it was a little too much work for them. So um, they decided to sign with Arista Records and Clive Davis. And Clive Davis went after them. He was hippie friendly. Uh, Arista was a brand new label. It had just started in 1974. He'd signed New Riders of the Purple Sage and Sons of Champlain and um, went after the dead and got him. But he put one important clause in that, and that's that they had to have an outside producer on everything. So the first part of this experiment, they got super hot ultra producer Keith Olsen, who had just come off recording the big Fleetwood Mac self-titled record. He has a long history with Stevie Nicks, did this the Buckingham Nicks record, did a lot of her solo work. And, um, you know, they went to work here in Los Angeles at Sound City and, and created this complete masterpiece with a lot of great stuff on it. Jerry's still very vibrant and thriving. Uh, there's a wonderful story about how the writing of the Terrapin Station movement happened. Apparently there was a lightning storm in San Francisco one night and Hunter was at home and watching it and got so inspired he sat down and wrote all the lyrics to Terrapin Station in one setting, which the lyrics that he wrote, there's a lot more than what the Grateful Dead recorded, you know, so seek out his own version of that if you're interested. And uh, meanwhile, Jerry was driving through San Francisco, right? Jerry driving in a car. Could you imagine being stuck at a red light and you look over and it's Jerry? So anyway, he's driving and sees the same lightning storm and has this melody come out of, in, his, in his head out from nowhere. And then the next day he gets together with Hunter. He's like, I have this music. And Hunter's like, I have these lyrics. And it's Terrapin freaking Station. So um, that's pretty magical. And uh, just this week, the 27th, was the 45th birthday of Terrapin Station. I w wish I'd put that together and released this that day. But, you know, better late than never. Um, so let's see. It's a very important record because they had signed with Arista. They were, you know, kind of trying to be a little more uh, radio friendly. And uh, Terrapin, of course, is not that. You know, it's the big epic um, conceptual piece. And today what we're going to do is we're going to go over the, the, the Terrapin Station orchestral movement, uh, which is just uh, one of the first things I ever connected to deeply with the dead. I must have heard it on like KLOS or something and just been like, you know, it really hit the uh, prog rock fan in me and I was like, that's cool. These guys are awesome. Um, you know, it's come off this big, beautiful, what's called the lady with a fan movement and I think there's another part there I can't remember and uh, you get... So basically what we're starting with is a D major chord, which is really acting as the four chord in for A minor. Um, and because A minor is really where everything here is based, like sort of an A blues, um, you know, so it's that, that means that if we have a D major and an A minor together, we're probably looking at key of G Dorian throughout. Um, and so uh, starts on the D, and then Jerry does this little very bluesy riff. Starts on, you know, blue scale, right? A minor blue scale. You're going to get a lot out of that and some add ons. And uh, it starts on the third fret, fifth string, fifth, seventh fret. A little slide up to, you can go to the ninth or you can go to the eighth. 
decide how bluesy you want to get that. Or Bob plays. He actually plays it here. Uh, like that little thing. And so as guitarists, guess what we can do? We can kind of play those together. You know, you can bar the the second and third string with your first finger and then use your pinky and third finger and just sort of slide out and slide back into that. I find that fun and effective when I play it by myself. And then there's this great little, you know, uh, lick that's uh, the ninth fret with your third finger. I'm sorry, it's going to start on the uh, seventh fret with your first finger. And then you drop down to the fifth. Then you go up to the seventh fret. Then you drop down to the fourth. And then five, four. And then you go to the fourth string. Five, seven. So that's. So, so far we've got and then there's this great sequence that you can kind of play all in one place it's very economical uh, and that you put your pinky on the tenth fret second string and your second finger on the ninth fret third string and your third finger on the tenth fret fourth string guess what that is that's an a minor you can also get that voicing here but this if you do it here then you can go then you put your first finger on the eighth fret second string take your pinky off Leave the second finger and third stringer, third finger where they are. And now this is a C, right? You're playing G E C, just a C triad. So you got, and then you bar the eighth fret, first string and second string with your first finger, and you can kind of just keep your second and third finger there, but you're gonna just play the top three strings so you're playing the an, an an inversion of that c chord now you're playing e g c and then you shift your position a little bit and play your first finger on the seventh fret first string eighth fret second string and third fret third string ninth fret and uh sort of an e minor you can kind of keep the C in there too if you want to, but that's all. And then I think sometimes Jerry does it and sometimes he doesn't. He closes the whole section off there by just hitting the second and third string still with your G note and your E note. So. And then a D. Uh, immediately that lick again, the little bluesy thing that Bob and Jerry do harmony-wise. And then you do that, that minor walk-down thing again. Now there's this really fun part that's a bunch of little arpeggios, you know, playing little triads full triads but you're just playing each note at a time so it starts with an a minor one but you're starting on the fifth of the a minor the e and you play e a c so that's a minor then you play an e minor triad and you're starting on the fifth the b and then g the third and e and then you play a D major triad. So D, F sharp, A, 
and then a C major triad, starting on the fifth of it. G, E, C. So that's E minor triad, D major triad, C major triad. And then you slide into E on the fifth string, ninth, seventh fret. And then go up and play a C and an A. So, so that whole section is... great ways to play that. I think Jerry just always plays those single notes. Or you can play them with octaves. I like to do that a lot. And then you you have a little space there that kind of lean on that D so you uh, play the, the strings play this very predominantly and live Jerry would play this. He would play the first finger he would play the first finger on the fifth fret D and then the third finger on the seventh fret E slide into F sharp the third and then B I'm sorry uh, an A the fifth on the D string and then maybe hit just that D there on the seventh fret and then maybe it just hit another chord and then it goes back to the and that's the start of it again that's the whole start of the phrase so the whole thing a little slow is so many fun things you know from there on it kind of opens up into a lot of different territories you know Jerry eventually plays the he plays that up an octave so you could play that you know So during the um, open spots on the D, you know, he'll do a lot of, you know, a lot of pentatonic riffing, and that's great. And that's Terrapin Station. That's the main lick. I uh, hope you enjoy that and have fun. I'd like to also mention that, um, you know, in honor of the ending of Grateful Dead Records, Ron Rakow, their old friend from San Francisco or in the early days, uh, he was a friend, was a photographer of theirs, uh, and then became the partner of Grateful Dead Records with them, and then eventually after that folded became their manager. Uh, but in the early days, his photography with the dead is off the charts. Like, he's the guy that took the great picture of Pigpen uh, holding Janis Joplin's boob um, or breast, and uh, he also took uh, some of the best photos of the dead when they were playing at uh, Haight-Ashbury, uh, you know, and the streets are all packed, like that one picture of Jerry like that, uh, he took that photo, um, so it's really fun to just Google his name, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, Rakow, 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 um, R-A-K-O-W, but it's really fun to Google his name and photography and see what comes up, as I've done. Um, but uh, let's see, Terrapin got its first uh, live performance on February 27th, 1977. Uh, my pal Ron was there uh, at the swing in San Bernardino, also the first estimated. Uh, they So baller. I mean, they came out and opened the show 
with this massive giant suite that hadn't been released yet. Nobody had ever heard it. Incredible. I can't even imagine. So anyway, Terrapin. Thank you so much for watching. Help on the way. Grateful Dead guitar instruction. H-O-T-W-G-D-G-I. Um, this is day six, the sixth video in the series. And I'm going to keep going right up until August 1st with these free videos. So spread them around. Let people know, you know, if they're into guitar and into the dead. I don't know. Those are pretty cool things. Thank you so much.